one of the important features in Proxmox that I use the most is the nodes. If you see here that I have created the nodes in the data center. How I have created these nodes? These are of course the HTML format here. If I edit this, you can see here all the sections that I have created, all the tables that I have created, all the rows that I have created and even the logo that comes directly from my website. Similarly, if I click on PSB1, now this particular information is related to PSB1 only which server is there, the date of purchase, what is the warranty and so on. Similarly, I can go to second one, uh, PSB2, Dell 7050 node 2 and node 3 also shows me the same thing. Uh, now, in case you want to use the same method of documentation and even I have created the containers and virtual machines also and those are also having the same methods. You can see here if I click on MySQL and here we have the summary. In summary, you can see the notes here also. Here it can be edited from here. Well, for this particular container, I have added the notes here. So this is Nginx reverse proxy and so on. And now as we are using Protectly now in Protectly, I want to add the nodes so that I can ensure that I remember these network adapters that these are different network adapters. Of course, if you simply go into nodes, you can just add this is Protectly. If I simply add this, so it will be available in the plain text. But I don't want, I want to read the complete documentation. The notes which I'm adding here in an HTML format, I'm sharing that with you. You can of course use those notes also. But the best thing is to use the chat GPT to prepare the HTML for you. You can see here, I have just asked it to prepare. I have provided the details. I'll simply copy that and I'll just come here, edit and paste it here and we'll see if anything is wrong in that. Just save it. Now you can see here, it has provided me the details also here. The Protectly v1610 this is the server overview. Then the server configuration is also added here. IP address, standalone Proxmox server. Here you can see Protectly server has six network ports configured for different network functions, including management, virtual machine network, and the firewall pass through with OpenSense. Port one is configured like this, port two, port three, and so on. You can see here that three, four, five, and six are configured with OpenSense. And these are guest network, wireless LAN, WAN network and home lab. And then these are the features and so on. You can of course add more information into it. So this is the great way to add your documentation and even you can add the link also. For example, if you want to make sure that you, could, you should be able to access OpenSense directly from here, you can provide the IP address of the wireless LAN network or WAN network or OpenSense network. So accordingly, you can add the URL to that. You will click that, it will automatically open. But here I wanted to show you the documentation. I will be sharing this particular file as an HTML format. You can edit that. I will also share with you the prompt. You can simply give this as an example to chat GPT or Cloud, and based on that, it will generate the HTML page for you. I will now show you that I want to add the OpenSense documentation here. So I will ask it to prepare another one. Follow the same format and give me the details for OpenSense virtual machine. Consider. All right. So now it is preparing the HTML and here you can see this page is completely added here. So I will just copy this HTML and I will go to Proxmox. Here is OpenSense and I will be simply clicking on notes and I'll be adding these notes over here and OK. Now these are the detailed notes here. You can see complete details can be seen here. So I'll be just changing it OpenSense VM. So it is OpenSense VM which is created. So this is the OpenSense configuration. You can of course edit it. Similarly, you can see here the true NAS. I can also get another file here. I can say it. And here also we can just go back to Protectly and we can see the true NAS configuration here. So here it will create a new HTML file now that I can use for the other virtual machine which I have created. Of course, this is extremely important because you will forget that what was the configuration. For example, in Protectly, what is the port, which port is for what purpose, you will definitely forget that. So it is always a good idea to uh, spend some time, do the documentation, save that documentation over here. So as I mentioned earlier also, when you are doing the backup of your host, so these files will also be backed up. So the uh, VM configurations will be backed up, VM nodes will be backed up. 
So when you restore those nodes, so you will understand that, okay, what was this VM for? What was the purpose of that VM? So maybe you will restore the VM, but if you are not restoring the information of the VM, then you will be lost. You will not know why this VM was created. That's the reason it is extremely important to prepare those nodes and save those, those nodes over here. So now these nodes are created. I will just wait for this to complete. And now we will just copy this. I'll go back to protectly to TrueNAS VM and I'll simply edit this. I can change it. Of course, ChatGPT has given you, but you can modify it to meet your requirements. Here is the TrueNAS score. I will be adding the URL also here. So it will be a hyper reference and I will close a tag also. And this will be simply TrueNAS score IP address. Yeah, it is 10.11.12.110. And I'll just simply click this. You will see here that TrueNAS is uh, opening here. So this way you can of course open this and here also for OpenSense VM. So I will just instead of OpenSense VM, I will say OpenSense and here I can add the URL of this also. I will do A and it will be the hyper reference and hyper reference will be 10.11.12.1. It will be HTTP and target will be underscore blank and it will be closed over here. We need to make sure that tags are correct here. Target is equal to blank and here is the comma. All right, so if I click this now, see here it has opened in a new tab. So make sure that you do the documentation so that you don't forget whatever has been added as a configuration. So let's continue to next video now.